You mean you're going to miss me, or are you going to miss turning down all my dinner invitations? <laughs> Ollie, I never meant to hurt your feelings. No, it wasn't you. It was I. You know how it is when you find yourself doing something you shouldn't be doing? No, maybe you don't. <laughs> well, I'm certainly going to avoid that in my campaign. <laughs> right. So anyway, I'll, um... Promise never to bring it up again. I'm sorry I put you in an awkward spot. Okay. Listen, I don't care if you do, Holly. It's not as if we're strangers. I mean, we we live together. You've seen me in all kinds of situations. Right. I remember that. So, I'll uh, I'll leave you to concentrate on winning this election, and I will concentrate on doing what I do best: work. <laughs> You do other things very well, too. I remember. Thanks. You know, it's funny. Blake may be right about something. All my life, I have relied on one man or another. I've never gone too long without one. And you know, it's been a while since I've had a migraine. It's also been a while since I've had a date. <laughs> you suppose there's any connection? <laughs> nah. Ross, they're ready for you. Well, listen, I appreciate you taking the time uh, to come down here. I know it was short notice. Not at all, not at all. I appreciate the equal airtime. Oh, by the way, um, I'll be in touch with you about the other matters we were discussing. Fine, fine. Oh, Jilly. Yeah. Uh, have you met the senator? Oh, Senator Flynn. Uh, Miss Grant, or is it uh, Speaks now? I believe uh, congratulations are in order. Thank you, it's Grant Speaks. <laughs> yes, well, Miss Speaks works very hard. She didn't even take time out for her honeymoon. Invaluable so, asset. Sounds like you should be asking him for a raise. Easy now. <laughs> well, I wasn't aware you were back in Springfield. No, I'm back home for a fundraiser. We're taping an interview with the senator about a new employment bill that he's uh, proposing that will be very, very good for the local economy. I wanted to run on the evening news. Mm -hmm. Well, you know we're running that other piece. Oh, well, that's no problem. The senator knows that Marler's announcing his candidacy, just providing equal time. After all, the station can't afford to be seen to be taking sides. Fair is fair, you know. Strange hearing those words come from you. America works when Americans work. <laughs> you like that? Leo, I like the whole interview. Well, I can't thank you enough for helping me get the message out. My civic duty. Just remember to address the interviewer. Right, and the camera will be right on you over Carla's shoulder. Okay. Well, Ross, it begins. Yes, it appears the battle lines have been drawn, eh, Roger? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm. Oh, you're making me look good, Ross. Too good. I handpacked you to take over the DA's office, and now look at you. Thanks, Leo. I appreciate everything you did for me, but, you know, it was, it was just time. I understand. I wish you well. Thank you. You too. Good to see you, Blake. Always a pleasure, Senator. You don't have to address the camera. Just hit the three or four major key points. Oh. Uh, right. Makeup. Listen, Janie, please check Mr. Marl under the lights. And keep it, you know. keep it conversational. Right. right. You've got a little hair that's sticking up. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, that yeah, that'll that's do fine. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Okay, just remember you're addressing John Q. Public, who's sitting right there in his living room. Got it? Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Sound sick. <clears throat> Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth under this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Is that enough? <gasps> oh, I... Ross, you did it. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> oh, we did it, you mean. My Senator Marler. I haven't been able to properly thank you oh. for all that you've done because it's just been too crazy. Oh, I'm so proud of you. I could burst. Now then, there's something that we have to talk about. Mm -hmm. And I thought it would be best until we waited until after this election. Well, it's going to be so different around here without you, you Alan Washington. That's what we need to talk about. Oh, but I'm so proud of you. I, I didn't mean to sound... No, Holly. I want you to come with me. I wouldn't miss it for the world. I'm going to cover the swearing in personally. Not for the news story. That's not what I mean. Then what? 
But looking back over these past few months, I've realized that you've stood with me every step of the way. Helping me, advising me, believing in me. I always believed in you, Ralph. Right? I know. I also know how much a part of me you've become. And how much I need you. And how much I still love you. I don't think I ever stopped loving you. Holly, we just never got the timing right. You know, with all the false starts and the miscues, we'd, we'd get so very close, and then there'd be Acapulco or Daniel or Roger, always Roger, and I blamed you for letting him interfere, and I accused you of not letting go, but I was doing the very same things. We, we both made mistakes. No, but the biggest mistake was my pride. My damnable pride. Now, like so many fools before me, I realize that what I've been searching for had been right there before me all the time. Now, then, I want you to come to Washington with me. Watch me being sworn in, and I want you standing right by my side in the well of Congress for the whole damn world to see. And then, how? I know how important that your career is to you and your independence, and you haven't wanted a man in your no. life, but... Oh, for the love of God, just say yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I will. I will marry you, and I love you. I've never stopped loving you. I promise you, I will be the best husband. I know you will. I'll spend the rest of my life trying to make you happy. you just now crunching numbers well i suppose i was daydreaming a little about ross oh no of course not i've given that up a long time ago and so today i'm announcing my candidacy for the united states senate i think there has to be a fundamental change in our approach to government as district attorney in Springfield, I've seen the results of quick-fix policies. I've, I've seen the results of short-term planning. I've seen them both in the streets and in the courthouse. 